In this first example, we will migrate user accounts and settings from one Windows 7 computer to another Windows 7 computer. First, we will export the data on the old computer, or source, to a file. Now we're going to take a look at the Windows Easy Transfer tool, and it replaces the old user migration tool on Windows XP. And it just makes it easy to copy, like, all your user data. And I mean, you could manually go in and copy your settings and documents or just recreate them, but this could be a time saver when you're upgrading from one operating system to another or simply moving from one computer to another. It will automatically back up all of your documents and files and pictures and music and videos and things like that, as well as your settings and favorites and you know the conf user configuration data that you would otherwise have to copy or configure manually and moving from one computer to another. So in the first example, we're going to just go from an old Windows 7 machine to a new Windows 7 machine. Let's say we just bought a new computer. And then in the next example, there's an additional tool we can download from the Microsoft website that you can install on Vista. And so you could actually take a Vista account and migrate it into a Windows 7 machine if you were upgrading that way. So first Windows 7 to Windows 7 and then Vista to Windows 7. In this example, we're on Windows 7. And if I go here, you can see the version. Um, in this case, Windows 7 Ultimate. And we are logged in as the user Starbuck. So what we're going to do is go to All Programs and Accessories, System Tools. And here's the Windows Easy Transfer tool. So I'm going to run it. And this could be terabytes of data if I had a big hard drive and lots of data. But this is an account that I just created. So it'll be small and that's good, so it won't take so long. Now you're presented with two choices here. Is it your new or your old computer? If you're on the old computer and you're doing the making the backup, you'd choose old computer. Then later when you're on the new computer and you're importing, you'd say new. So old computer is equal to export and new computer is equal to import. Don't know why they didn't title it that, but so old computer because I want to export or back things up. And it will go through and it'll scan all the items um, you know on your computer. And it'll tell you, you know, how large it would be, and it'll also give you the choice you can customize what you want and do not want to back up when you utilize the tool. It's finished uh, scanning Starbuck. Now it's finished scanning C Germany. And that we'll look at the shared items. Okay, and now it's going to give me estimates on what I could choose to back up. And all right, so all of the different users here. And I'm not going to do so I'm just going to do Starbuck. Let's say Starbuck, Starbuck is jumping ship. And right now, the host name of this machine is uh, Aphrodite. And she's going to want to migrate her to Frankenstein. And they're both Windows 7 Ultimate. So 104.5, that won't take too long. So we'll do that. Let's next. And give it a password if you want to. I'll just use a cheesy four character one. And what do you want to call the file? And you can't see file extensions here, so um, let me enable that. I swear, why Windows chooses that by default, it's annoying. I mean, I don't know why anybody wouldn't want to see their file extensions and have all these files hidden from them and you know, whatever. I guess some people are of that opinion. But this makes it a lot easier to. Um, so here's my password. There, now you can see it's got a .mig extension. So it's going to save that file, and I'm just going to throw it in a folder here. We'll have a folder, and we'll call it backup. Backup. 
I'm just going to name this Starbuck. And here we go. The music's going to go ahead and go through. So now we're exporting, right? This is the old computer. We're exporting, and then soon we'll be importing on the new computer. And now we're just backing up the shared items that we have left. Okay, and now it's done. And click next, and next, and close. And we're done with the export process now, or that is the backup, that part of the migration. So, again, if I were to go into this backup folder, you'd see it's compressed. So it's about 160 meg compressed down to about half that size, 76 meg. And there's Starbuck.mig or MIG from migration, short for migration. So I'm going to share this directory out. Just need read access, that'll be fine. Notice, you know, my host name, Aphrodite. And we're just going to test it. We'll type in the host name. And let's see what shows up from the network. All right, so there and there's Starbuck Mig, so it shows up from the network. Now we will import the user account data and settings on the new Windows 7 computer or destination. Okay, we were on Aphrodite, now we're on Frankenstein. And don't have that set up in a DNS yet, so let's just ping Aphrodite. We're only interested in her 32-bit IP version 4 address right now. Not just control C, we don't alright, so let's connect to this address and just backslash backslash paste that in and we'll authenticate and there is Starbuck Mig. So I'm just going to copy that file over and throw it on the desktop. And I could also import it from across the network if I wanted. But just to show you there's that file right so if I wanted to import that user from my old Windows 7 machine to my new Windows 7 machine. Um, again, I want to go into accessories. System tools. Let me launch the easy transfer tool. Next. And this time I'd say this is my new computer because I want to import. From your old computer to an external hard disk or USB flash drive, I want to say yes and just I want to browse to it. In this case, I have to do it on my desktop. And there's Starbuck MIG. And the password is my cheesy four character password. And it'll estimate 104.5. What I want to transfer, yes, and just go ahead and transfer. Okay, and now the import of Starbuck is complete. And now, you know, again, this is not all the applications and things. It's not like doing a complete image like you would with, you know, Linux or Pendrive Linux's Clonezilla or Ghost. But it is like your user settings and your documents and things. File names are transferred successfully when user account thread in any document system settings and so forth. Okay. So um in this case, I'm going to close. And just to show you, if I go here, and pull this over here, 
and local users and users and there you see Starbuck the Viper palette she's been transferred along with her desktop and all her settings in the second example we will migrate user accounts and settings from a Windows Vista computer to a Windows 7 computer first we will export the data on the old Vista computer or source to a file in this example uh, we're in Vista or Vista and let's create a user here so again this is a business edition remember if you had you know home premium or basic you, you wouldn't have this option you have to just go to control panel and use the the users node but here in business edition you can right click go manage we're going to make uh, another user account and new user and we're going to let's see who are we going to do um Peter Griffin. Uh, that's who we'll do. And. Alright, so I have a Peter Griffin here. And I'm going to log out. And log in to just to you know, build his desktop. Now I'll go ahead and create the folder and build his desktop and everything. And this is a, a different operating system. So in this case we're going to have to download the migration tool for Vista. Okay, so now we are logged in as Peter Griffin. And I'm going to go to all programs. And notice if I go to accessories and system tools, there's a Windows Easy Transfer here, but the problem is this Windows Easy Transfer is, you know, it was created when Vista was created, it was before Windows 7. So if I want to transfer or migrate Peter Griffin from Vista to Windows 7, I have to upgrade that. I have to install another app. So let's go here. And I'm going to go to and I'm going to go to Windows Software. And then what the tool that I want to install is this one here. And you can Google for it, but it's Windows 6.0-KB928635-x86.msu. But again, in my profile, I haven't. Uh, I have to set up the ability to view file extensions, so you could see that. All right. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and do that. So if I did that here, 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 here. And here. You can see it's dot MSU. No, I have all extensions enabled. I'm gonna get rid of this too, by the way. Um just because it will use a lot less resources. There, I don't really need all that extra garbage just taking up memory and CPU cycles and everything and not doing any useful thing. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this and we just want to upgrade it. So remember you just Google for this, you need to download it from Microsoft's website. I'm trying to remember what my own password was. And it was no password. Okay. Click OK to install the following Windows software update, update for Windows. In this case I'm gonna say yeah. And again the idea is to update Vista which was created before Windows 7 so that its easy transfer tool can will be capable of then uh, migrating a user account settings and documents and, and you know user objects from Vista to a later operating system Windows 7 so this makes it upwards compatible with Windows 7 if if not 
if I were to use the easy transfer tool in Vista as it is without you know upgrading it with this file that you must download then it would only work from Vista to Vista it wouldn't work from Vista to Windows 7 so it's, it's being updated being installed and again the file is Windows 6.0-KB9 28635-x86.msc you can look for it on the Microsoft website but probably the easiest thing to do is just to Google it that's how I found it I googled the file name and download and look for the Microsoft TechNet you know link on Google okay and that's it so let's test it out so if I go here all programs and accessories and give uh, Peter Griffin <sighs> administrator privileges here so let's do this We'll go to System Tools and Windows Easy Transfer, and let's right-click, and we'll say Run as Administrator. We'll just use sort of a secondary logon privilege here. All right, so Windows Easy Transfer next, and then what I want to do is start a new transfer, continue a transfer in progress. In this case, I need to export. So, which computer are you using now? I'm my old computer, because this is where I want to export. The transfer cable, in this case, I want to use removable media. Oops, didn't mean to skip a page here, but what I want to do is CD or DVD, USB flash drive, external hard disk, or network location. That's what I want to do, network location. And we're just going to call this Peter Griffin. And we'll put it in a folder called Backup. Peter Griffin .mig for Migrate. And we'll put a cheesy four character password on it. And then what do I want to do? All user accounts, files and settings, my user account, files and settings only, or advanced options. In this case, I'm going to choose my account. And then now we're checking what can be transferred. All right. So in this case, we can choose. Um, if we want C Germany, and we could customize who we want to back up here. Let's do. We're not going to do C Germany, but we just want to do Peter Griffin. All right, and we'll do all of Peter Griffin. He can't, won't be very large, so it won't take us long. Notice I could add files and drives and things if I want, but I'm just going to go with the default, his application settings, Windows settings, and documents. So 70 megabytes is the transfer size. And we'll go ahead and do this for Peter Griffin. All right, so we're done now with the export. And it's backed up to a folder, and so now we're ready to copy it over to the new computer and do the import. And we could copy it to a flash drive or a USB drive or burn it to a CD or just copy it across the network. In this case, I'm just going to make a share. And so we put it in a folder called Backup. And there's PeterGriffin.mig. All right, and compressed. It's 6.2 kilobytes. So I'm just going to share that folder out now. And again, I'm logged in as Peter Griffin, so I'm using a secondary log on privileges here, but permissions, this is if everyone read. And on the security, make also make sure that we'll just throw the everyone group on there, simplify it. Give them read. Alright. And let's see what our host name is. And that's 
that's a bit cryptic. But just to check our path, and there's backup. And we'll leave this machine running, and let's go hop on our Windows 7 machine and see if we can import and complete the transfer. Second, we will import the data to the new Windows 7 computer or destination from the file. Now we're on our Windows 7 Ultimate Workstation hostname Aphrodite in the peer to peer work group Battlestars. And so that we don't have to wait for the dynamic uh, DNS to update via DHCP, we're just going to use IP address. So backslash, backslash, and 129. This is the address of our Vista machine 129.222. Uh, 50103. So remember it had the network share that we want to import the MIG file, the migration file from. Let's see, let's use the host name of the machine and well, let's use the host name of the machine uh, only account I can remember. I think we just had a simple four character password. Or maybe it was an eight character. There we go, it was an eight character password. Can't even remember. Alright, so we're on the Windows 7 Ultimate Machine. We're connecting to the Vista machine. This is the machine that we exported. And there's PeterGriffin.mig. Let's just copy that over. So this was exported on Vista, so we had to upgrade Vista into Service Pack 1, and then we had to install the tool. Exported on Vista, and we're going to import it in Windows 7. Made possible because of using the update in Vista that was provided by Microsoft. And let me go here to System Tools. And Windows Easy Transfer. And we'll launch the wizard. Next, and external, and then this is my new computer from Vista to Windows 7. I already saved files from my old computer to external hard drive, and I'm going to say no, it has not yet. Um, actually, wait a minute, let me see, let's see, yeah, let's say yes. Why well, I'm just, haven't slept all night, and now I'm getting very tired and drowsy. Um, so let's go find it, and in this case we copied it to our desktop. And there's PeterGriffin.mig, migration. Let's open it. And it was a simple, cheesy four character password. And then choose what to transfer to this computer. I'm going to do all of Peter Griffin settings. Choose transfer. Should have done one for Brian and Stewie too. Okay, and now it's done and I can see what was transferred. 27 documents of user account program and system settings and the date and click close. And what I do notice if I go here and right click and manage and I'm going to go to the user and group management snap in. And you'll see Peter Griffin's account there now. He's been migrated from Vista to Windows 7 via an easy transfer upgrade in Vista to make it compatible with Windows 7. There's Peter Griffin right there. Let's take just a peek at the Windows 7 Easy Transfer Tools predecessor, which was the old Windows XP Files and Settings Transfer Wizard. And this is Windows uh, XP Professional Service Pack 3. And just to show you, it too had a, you know, a transfer tool, but it was an easy transfer. If I would go to System Tools, it was the File and Settings Transfer Wizard. But it would let you do something similar. You could pick old computer, new computer. So this is the old computer. I could back something up. Um, you know, user account that I have installed on here. And then 
this old method DCC or the direct cable connection that was horrible that was like you know 115 baud or just some outrageously slow it would take you like you know days to back up a lot of data that way so you would almost always choose this method and of course floppies were too small they only have 1.4 megabytes but we could go here and make a folder backup okay that's where we would choose to do this and then what you want to do is settings only files only and you know obviously for a more thorough migration you'd want to do both but to save some time I'm just going to do settings only just to show you and so it's going to collect all my user settings the file and settings transfer wizard and I can click on finish and I'm going to open up my C drive here on the Poseidon and get it back up and there you can see it was a different format it's not the you know the MIG format everything's just in one file with Vista and Windows 7 but here you would have you know multiple folders and files so same pretty much you know the same functionality you know maybe less bells and whistles and things but that's what it would look like if you're in XP Service Pack 3